I'm mad. I'm mad because Greg from How to Drink decided to drag the delicious substance that is cilantro through the fucking mud in a recent episode of his show where he decided to ruin a mint julep by putting cilantro in it instead. Well, I will not accept the beguilement, deflowering, and molestation. I hate that word. Molestation of cilantro's good name, cilantro julep. Today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hello there, there, my name is Michael. I am a home uh, home mixologist and a private events bartender currently available for hire from Kalamazoo, Michigan. And today, um, I'm not actually that mad. <laughs> I'm disappointed because uh, a little while ago, Greg from How to Drink put out a video called Ruin a Drink with One Word, where the idea was to take the name of a cocktail and change one of the words and then by virtue make that drink suck. I was disappointed because he, somebody had suggested a cilantro julep. And in the video, he's, he, he actively states, oh yeah, I don't want all of these to be, you know, totally shitty. Uh, I want some of them to be, to be good. But this one has some like idea behind it. I think it could actually work really well. And he just kind of throws, throws, throws the idea away. I think, I think there was room to be creative here. And I want to submit to him and anybody who saw that video, a good cilantro, uh, a good cilantro julep. So let's make a cilantro julep right now. To begin, we need to uh, talk about the notion of how we're gonna change the platform of the julep to work with a, a flavor as specific as cilantro. And the answer is to switch from bourbon to tequila, specifically an Añejo tequila, and in my case, cent cent uh, cent Centenario. This is the first time I bought this this brand. I, <laughs> I'm not familiar with the name yet. Centenario came to me as a recommendation from the folks over at Tiffany's Wine and Spirits, who at this point uh, have an unofficial sponsorship with me. <laughs> Tiffany's, if anybody out there who works there, or runs that store, sees this, I'm open to the possibility of a sponsorship. <laughs> Uh, so this is an Añejo tequila. I think those are aged for a minimum of five years, sometimes longer than there are extra Añejos that go like well beyond that. In general, it's a reliable boilerplate, very strong and if a little basic rich tequila that I think will stand up well in a julep. So we're gonna use that. Let's add a couple other ingredients. There's not really much else to say. Let's go ahead and start making our cilantro julep. I make all my juleps in the hailstorm style uh, per John Dabney. So we're gonna grab our shaker here. Behind me, I have a bunch of freshly washed cilantro. I'm going to take, uh, I'm gonna say like three to four stems worth of this and put the leaves into our shaker here. I'm ascribing to a very particular historical representation of a julep rather than um, a more modern julep because modern juleps are, I think, a little bit short in their preparation and a little bit um, kind of saccharinely overly sweet and not really embracing the effect of the spirit. So, um, I'm just doing it the way I like to do it. When you make a julep in a shaker too, you don't have to muddle. So we're gonna stip, uh, skip that step because the ice will obliterate it anyway. And we're gonna move on to our next ingredients. We're gonna follow that up with one to two dashes of Angostura bitters. Which just like every time I use it, I'm going to spill all over my goddamn bar. And we will come behind that with three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup. This is a three to one honey syrup that I've been using for a little while now in a couple different cocktails. It's gonna work great here. Finally, we're going to come behind that with our final ingredient, three ounces of an Añejo tequila. Three ounces seems like a lot, but in the traditional preparation, this is a long drink served over a lot of ice. And while you could scale those proportions back, I'm building it to be slightly larger so that I can use a little bit more cilantro, embrace its flavor, and not have that bitters take too much presence in the cocktail. That is actually all of our ingredients, so let's go ahead and talk about ice. Back in the day, hailstorm juleps were known for, for the fact that they were so cold, prepared with so much ice, an insane amount of ice. It was really the feature of the cocktail that distinguished it from other cocktails because most things that back in that day, you know, talking pre-Civil War even, um, were made without ice. They were made neat. So the embracing of ice as a new culinary asset was a big part of that drink's history, and I'm going to hold true to that by cracking three whole cubes of ice in here and blitzing this as hard as we possibly can. We are gonna cap that up, tap that down, 
and give that a good shake, a really hard, really good shake, for 12 to 15 seconds. Now, because we're making a julep, the ideal form of serveware would be a julep cup. Now, if you're like me and you don't have one of those, because you don't want to buy one online without the proper size reference, something like a Moscow Mule Mug, this steel thick-walled one in particular, would be pretty useful. Um, it would hold on to a lot of the temperature really, really well and keep things from getting warm too fast, which is going to be the death of this drink. Um, however, I actually prefer to use copper Moscow Mule Mugs because they're designed to hold on to that, texture, uh, that temperature without needing to be so thick and absorb so much of it at the start. Plus, I think it'll look really good alongside our uh, soon-to-be garnish. So we're gonna grab a copper Moscow Mule Mug. We're gonna grab a lot of smaller format ice and dump that right on in. I wanna really stack this up so it is as cold as it can possibly be. And if you can, actually, freeze your glass first, and then when you add the ice, it'll keep solid for a lot longer even as we start to pour the drink over it. I grab my cocktail strainer that I forgot to clean before this video because I am unprofessional. Crack open our shaker and then pour our cocktail over. We're gonna come behind this with a combination of garnishes. I'm gonna grab a couple good looking sprigs of cilantro here just kind of break off the bottom portions of their stems and slot them in on the side of the drink. And then I actually think um, there's a case to be made here for a little bit of acidity being helpful just because tequila plays really well with lime in particular. So as a garnish to give people the option, I'm gonna take just a wedge and throw that on the rim of the glass next to our cilantro. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the not so cursed cilantro julep. Okay, so we've got our cilantro julep here. I'm gonna very carefully remove it from the, the towel. It likes to stick when something is this cold. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, give that a sip. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh my God. The, the thing about cilantro is that it and mint and thyme all sort of fall for me, maybe not time, but mint and cilantro and parsley, um, for sure, fall in this kind of similar space where they're very light yet powerful, noticeable, distinct flavors. Um, things that can be overpowered with enough effort, but in general um, will hold up to being prepared in various ways. It's why, you know, a little bit of cilantro goes a long way when you're making a salsa. Uh, it's why a little bit of mint goes a long way when you're making a julep. And I mean, really, you should go crazy with the mint. Why enough, you know, a little bit of chopped parsley on top of your, um, you know, homemade garlic bread, if you make homemade garlic bread, is enough to really pull, you know, the flavors of those those spices together. It's the same thing here. The cilantro is, is present and loud, and loud enough that it acts as a complement to that tequila flavor, which in this context is sort of emboldened by the honey from its, because those natural sort of honey-like flavors from the aging of the tequila, and is kind of, complementing the sort of vegetal grassy nature that tequila has, um, and it's it's playing together perfectly. That little bit of Angostura bitters is really important here too, because while it's not super detectable, it is giving the cocktail a little bit of extra character and sort of enhancing the aged nature of this particular tequila, which actually, I actually really do like this, this tequila. I sipped a Glencairn of this tequila neat the other night uh, because I thought it was so good. And that's not normal for me. I, I Generally speaking, I don't do that. So um, take that as you will. <laughs> so it's sort of bold, sweet tequila that's been kind of, kind of, you know, loosened a little bit from the heavy amount of dilution, which is what you were looking for. It's pulling out some of the rich, oaky bitterness and the tannic nature of the aging in the tequila, and it's kind of enhancing that a little bit, which is playing off of this very light sort of like bright character of the cilantro that's dancing off of it. The, the bitters does kind of disappear, but I know it's definitely doing something in there. Yeah, the bitters is sort of giving it this kind of spiced characteristic like you would find in like a Captain Morgan spiced rum. Um, that's actually doing really, 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 really great things with the uh, the honey and the cilantro in combination. I think it's kind of pulling them together a little bit by giving it a more broad bouquet to present um, to you as the drinker. Also, good sign that you've done this correctly and it is just 
frigid cold, you've got this nice thick layer of ice forming from the condensation on the outside of the glass. That, that's what you want to see on a julep. Oh my God. I'm going to enjoy many of those before cilantro officially goes out of season because we're getting very, very close. <laughs> it was slim pickings at the, uh, at the grocery store. So enjoy it while you can. And Greg, if you see this video, which I'm going to try very hard to make sure you see this video by, by just, I, wa I want you to see it. <laughs> uh, try it, because I think you'll be surprised. <laughs> anyway, that is the end of our episode. Um, and to sort of maybe mend fences for my uh, incredibly intense opening here where I'm uh, yelling begrudgingly at, um, at Greg for messing up my cilantro. We're gonna go ahead and read from the friends section as a notion of, I don't actually hate you for doing this. Our toast from Crisp Toasts today goes as such. May we never want a friend to cheer us or a bottle to cheer him. Cheers. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. If you enjoyed it, click that like button down below and subscribe to catch more. I make a new episode of this show every single Friday. It comes out at noon, and then sometimes I put one out on Tuesdays at noon. So click that bell notification down below to be told when that happens. My socials are either on the screen or have been, uh, coming up on the screen or have been on the screen for a moment now. Um, either way, you can follow them or don't. I don't really care. I don't really use anything other than YouTube as it is. I'm trying to get back into TikTok and Instagram, but I'm really just here. So if you are, that's cool. Thanks again so much for watching, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to drink responsibly and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. I'm mad.